Hi everyone, my name is Carter, and today we're going to be discussing how to conjugate antibody and DNA. This is part of a series where I explore different methods to conjugate biomolecules. So if this topic is interesting to you, please click that like button and the subscribe button. And also, check out that description down below because we're going to be discussing a paper where all this information is presented and it's a lot more detailed. So today we're going to be conjugating the lysines of the heavy and light chains of antibodies with the 5' prime end of oligos. The lightning link kit is available from Abcam and a link is in the description. The final conjugate of the antibody and the DNA will look like this. The goal is to have an antibody that has a unique barcode attached to it so that you can detect the number of antibodies in solution using PCR methods. The PCR handle can be used for amplifying the amount of DNA. And this barcode is a unique identifier for the antibody, so you can have multiple antibodies within a pool. The kit comes with 10 vials of unique oligos that have already been barcoded and have phosphorothioated ends so that they resist nucleus degradation. Appcam doesn't really publish what's on the 5' end to enable conjugation to the lysine on the antibody. However, I suspect that maybe they're modifying the thymidine. I'm not really sure. If you're interested in conjugating DNA and antibody without the use of a pre-made kit like this with pre-made barcoded sequences, I'll be publishing a video on that, so subscribe and get notified. The general method for conjugation is super simple. Just mix the antibody with the barcoded oligos and also add a buffer that comes with the kit and just leave it overnight at 25C. Then the next day, add a quencher that comes with the kit and leave it for one hour. At this point, you can purify or run SDS page for analysis. Note that since you're using lysine and lysine has this amine chain that we're going to be reacting with our barcoded oligos. You need to use amine free buffers so that it doesn't compete with this conjugation chemistry and you don't have any side reactions or competing reactions. At the end of conjugation and cleanup, you can run STS page as is shown here. You can also run non reducing native page and you get different kinds of information from the two kinds of gels that you're running. The nice thing is that the heavy chain and the light chain are nicely separated on STS page. You can actually determine if you've got one, two, or three oligos that are bound to each of these chains. When using the non-reducing native page, the information you get is the weight of IgG and the weight of conjugate. And later I'll show you some data that actually shows you how many of the conjugate oligos are on each of those IgGs. And here's that data. With slightly different running conditions that are presented within the protocol that I've linked in the description, you can separate our IgG from one, two, three, or four oligos that are attached to it. And that's it for this quick bite. You can get the details of how the AppCam kit works by following the link that's in the description. Again, if you'd like to keep learning things like this, like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I publish a new video about a new technique for conjugating different kinds of biomolecules. This is Carter, signing off.